we'll live forever here because um, I'm about to tell you how we're going to checkmate death. I also want to thank the doctor is it, uh, who just left. I see she's leaving. Thanks for that great spa lecture. You convinced me once again that I shouldn't be in business whatsoever uh, because it's too much to manage uh, medical offices and too much to get everybody on the same page. So I, I, I want to just remember to simply retire from business in the checkmate of death, I think we all need to know where we are on the chessboard, and one place I'm not is in managing businesses. Uh, what I'm going to tell you about is brain health. I'm going to tell you that 33 years ago when I started in, in this field, uh, they told me that lead was safe at 80 parts per million, my first book, Zinc and Other Micronutrients, and the EPA changed everything to my way. They're down to 10. At Harvard Medical School, in my interview and in my research project there, I, learned, I was uh, told by the dean, you know, I don't see how we can admit you. I know you're doing research here, but we don't believe that nutrition has any role whatsoever in medicine. Good old dean of Harvard Medical School, 1979, to his uh, Brandeis, Brandeis Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa guy, who was doing research at Harvard Medical School. All right, so let's tell you how you're going to be sharp. Let's see if we know how to do this. I don't think this works. You want to move it forward for me? Or maybe, oh, let's go. There we go, maybe it is working. All right, this is the professor that we're working on, an endowed chair in brain health and aging based on my mentor, who knows that memory is the most fundamental issue for all of you. Memory is the number one issue that will keep all of you young. And I'm going to tell you how never to lose memory. And the good news is you should be able to increase your memory with age. So Clark Rant was our memory professor at NYU, and I'm in charge of the Clark Rant Brain Health and Aging Lectures now at New York Hospital in Cornell Medical Center. Here's our, so actually there was a laser pointer. I'll take, if Dr. Bajaj gives me a laser pointer, but anyway, let's see if this works. It doesn't look too good. It looks dead. All right. Six honest serving men, their names are what, why, when, how, where, and who. What are we talking about? Memory in the failing brain. Why? Because it's the number one thing that makes you human. When? It starts for most people at 30 years old. How? With many mechanisms from the body to the brain, changes in blood flow and brain chemistry. Where? Brain, spinal cord, and throughout the body. To whom? Everybody. It is heterogeneous. What do I mean by heterogeneous? Some of you have dementia because you're losing attention and verbal memory. Some of you are losing working memory and you're also losing attention for omissions. Some of you are losing emotional IQ in situations and also losing some visual memory. So it happens in many different degrees. Some lose their keys, some lose their head, some do risky behaviors, some crash ski into a tree, some people that are getting pre-dementia drive their car off a cliff, some commit suicide, some are depressed, some are anxious. You say to yourself, are those really all pre-dementia? Virtually all are pre-dementia. They're all part of the cognitive decline that occurs between 40 and 80, which is why people can't go to medical school. Look at the third bullet. With the discovery of neurogenesis, regeneration of brain cells, the idea is that we can actually increase our intellectual capacity as we age, meaning grow smarter rather than stupider. When I went to med school, among the bright things that they told me, besides nutrition was meaningless and lead was safe and drugs were fabulous and hospitals are a wonderful place to die for $500,000 and who needs a rabbi or a priest and that horse estrogen was good for, your, uh, good for a woman, even horse skin transplants. Why not? You're giving horse estrogen. Why not give her an entire horse's head? Anyway, those are the kinds of things we learned in medical school and, of course, I say those things tongue-in-cheek. They also told me that you can't grow new neurons, 
and DNA made RNA, but RNA couldn't make DNA. And thank God I never listened to anybody because virtually the core paradigms of what they taught were wrong. Dementia takes 20 years to develop is the current standard view. I'm telling you it takes 40 years to develop. I'm telling you, if you look at this graph, this is conventional medicine. Uh, the black mark, if you go all the way to the end, we, we really should have a laser pointer at this thing. Or maybe this would do it. No. You get one? Good, fabulous. Black mark tells you basically the way that conventional medicine looks at things. They look all the way at the end of this graph, which somehow... Oh, well, there it is. They look all the way over here and they say, ah, 30% are demented. That's nonsense. Here's the real story. The real story is, even this is too nice a story, this is too sweet news. The good news is we're going to reverse it. The bad news is, this seems very inconsistent, but I'll try. Bad news is, if you can look over there, is 50%. 50-50 by 85, you're either demented or cognitively impaired. By 70, I consider virtually everybody is really cognitively impaired. I'm going to tell you the real story. 70-year-old people are all cognitively impaired. All right, 60-year-old people are all cognitively impaired to some degree. And the impairment is diverse. It affects all these different things that I'll show you. It affects your attention. It affects your reaction time, it affects your judgment, it affects your choices and behaviors, you know, uh, from acting out with affairs to uh, hurting your children in other ways. And Alzheimer's is going to be an epidemic, and mild cognitive impairment already is. And nobody, there's all sorts of attempts to diagnose it with a lot of different techniques. And I'm going to show you what I'm convinced is a definitive method by which you can diagnose your cognitive impairments and then have targeted repair. So you're going to be a targeted repair of your cognitive problems. And right now, nobody has a new standard yet, but we're going to introduce your new standard. And it's going to be the brain map. We're going to brain print you. And each person's going to get a brain print. And I'm going to explain that to you. And the reason, here it gives you some of the clues for why you want a brain print. If you look right here at the fulcrum of life, which is roughly, in this graph, about 39 to 46, where most of your abilities are flat. After that, reasoning, spatial orientation, perceptual speed, Verbal ability is the last to go. That's why you still have people who are running for president at 72. Verbal memory goes. And the ones that are really at their worst is what appears to be, uh, looks like they don't have both things marked, but it's primarily perceptual speed is the things that really get uh, leave you. So perceptual speed is a big problem. Now, everyone knows how to I diagnose the cardiac age of people, and this is what we do. So the question is, how do we diagnose your brain's decline? Well, it's very simple. Uh, you need to know the same things that you do about the heart. You need its electrophysiology. You need to know the functional role of the brain, which is its forms of memory, attention. You need to know a person's temperament and type because that affects their cognitive style. And you need to know their psychiatric state and their IQs.